Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one I'll, uh, it's a small DIY project uh, that I did because I wanted to have a ball mice and a ball mice uh, although it's expensive um, I could have bought it but uh, it, would, it would have taken a few days to arrive and I needed it pretty soon so I decided to make my own now i had the parts lying around so i was able to do it in an hour so i did beat amazon's fastest delivery that's available which is less than 12 hours so yeah if you want a mouse uh, that is there faster than amazon can deliver it uh, this is your uh, project and um, hopefully you have parts lying around so anyways uh, what we are using is the arduino leonardo uh, this project will only work with an arduino leonardo a variant of this might work with uh, arduino duo uh, but we'll discuss that later uh, for our controls for our actual mouse controls we have the joystick shield from funduino uh, you can use other ones but the pinout might be different so you'll have to change the code accordingly uh, and it has one uh, joystick uh, that clicks uh, we have two buttons here and we have four directional uh, buttons there uh, and it has a bunch of pinouts if you want to attach any sort of it uh, you know uh, accessories to it you can although it does have a shield button but note that most shields would not fit since uh, the d-pad comes in the the joystick comes in the way uh, the Leonardo is special because it has a micro USB post that acts as a host that means your system will simply detect it as a USB device uh, and I'll show you in a second how that looks on Linux and uh, so it just shows up as a generic usb device you don't have to install any drivers uh, write any code on the system it works with every single thing that supports a uh, usb mouse i've tried with the efi bios i've tried with uh, open bsd windows 98 95 anything that supports the usb mouse standard uh, will work with this just fine so we have that and then we have the again the uh, the shield uh, make sure the shield is on 5 volts because the leonardo uses 5 volts if you're using it with the dew uh, make sure that the shield is set to 3.3 volts otherwise you might have issues with the analog inputs uh, because that uses a 3.3 volt standard now another thing to consider if you're using the dew uh, is that the dew actually has a few issues so uh, uh, you know again we will talk about it in a second but you know simply place the shield on the board and press it in place uh, this is so this is how it kind of looks like uh, make sure all the pins are in there uh, nice and fixed and once that is done you can plug that in uh, before we plug it in I will uh, you know uh, just make sure you can see everything else uh, there's the code as well and here is my uh, Arduino setup uh, and then uh, let's plug it in and see what shows up on the D message running uh, on this uh, part side of the screen and we plug that in and you can see it does detect Arduino uh, as Arduino but uh, you can also see it detects it as a uh, HID device which is the human interface device and it sees uh, human interface device uh, mouse and it just uses the generic uh, USB mouse driver to work and it just starts working there is no other issues with it now if you were using a duo you would have to press the reset button to get it into the mouse mode there are some issues with it uh, it's probably because the duo runs on a arm cortex processor that kind of emulates that usb host functionality or maybe the usb host functionality isn't available uh, if you run something like uh, Zephyr uh, that uh, can emulate mouse or something else uh, things might be different but the way the Arduino code runs on the DU is they have a real-time operating system running and then uh, kind of like a Arduino uh, uh, compatibility layer or an emulator whatever you want to call it uh, to like like just run the Arduino code on it on one of the threads uh, as an application instead of actually running on hardware uh, so if you are using the uh, you know Arduino IDE, uh, 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 things might be a bit different. But if you are directly using Free or Toss on the Arduino Duo or Zephyr, uh, then it should work much much better. 
because you're directly running it on the OS. Um, so again, uh, yeah, so that's why that's one of the reason I use Leonardo. And the other reason is the Arduino IDE can actually access the EEPROM uh, inside it and, uh, you know, store some stuff that I want it to store, uh, mouse settings and stuff, DPI settings. Uh, and uh, we will see how that works. Um, the DU cannot do that because the Arduino ID again doesn't have access to Arduino DU's internal flash memory. Uh, it doesn't have EEPROM. The third reason I don't use a DU because it's a very very overkill for what we're doing. It's a expensive board. You can get Leonardo for comparatively much much cheaper. Uh, locally I can just get it for the price of an Arduino. It's a very simple chip um and uh, it it works just fine so price is a big factor uh, in suggesting using an uh, leonardo instead of a uh, arduino duo so again uh, if i move my joystick you can see the mouse response uh, now there is an led right there that's the power led and next right next to it there is a dimmer led that's the dpi uh dpi it shows what dpi is it on uh, DPI level it is on. Um, I'm, I'm saying DPI, but it's not really DPI. Uh, I'm just saying because that's a mouse term, it's more of a sensitivity stuff. Uh, and when I push that LED, you can see that it kind of changes in brightness. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it changes in brightness and then goes off. So when it's off, it's in the lowest like sensitivity setting and it will move really slow. So you can be very, very accurate. And then uh, you can just go on from there. It just moves a bit faster every time you increase it. And this setting uh, is actually saved in the EEPROM. So every time you reboot your system or power down the mouse, it's saved. So you can see I can just simply put it on the uh, off position and remove the power and plug that back in. And it is still in that mode in the slower mode and I can put it in the highest mode and plug and you can see it's faster and plug that out and plug it back in and you can see it remains in the uh, highest sensitivity mode the button uh, right below it is uh, you just switch quickly between the low the very low sensitivity mode uh, and the current mode you are in. So you can switch uh, from whatever mode you are in, uh, right, like this to the low sensitivity mode. In, instead, you instantly need precision for very small uh, buttons and stuff, which I found very useful, and that's why I just decided to add it. And you can press that again to go back to the last sensitivity mode you are on, uh, and that will just resume. So whether it's the highest one or it's the uh, couple ones below that. The now coming to the other buttons, uh, the button, the black buttons here up and top, these are used to scroll, so you can just press it and scroll down, and that will work just fine. And the other ones are the left and right click, so the left click works as expected, yeah. And you can actually go up there, I can, I can go into uh, low sensitivity mode to aim myself here and press this, and I can also then go and use the uh, right click and that works as well uh, again you can switch it in software uh, or you know reuse one of the buttons add more buttons to you know configure it on the go in case you want kind of stuff kind of like that um, yeah so that's pretty much it in terms of functionality uh, and going through the code you have the main initialization here uh, and then a bit more stuff down there. So you can see we have our sensitivity settings right there. Um, and uh, the delays are 10 milliseconds, which I found was kind of the sweet spot because that also affects sensitivity a lot. So if you have very low delay, uh, you really need to, you know, the, the level two sensitivity also becomes very, very sensitive uh, and that poses an issue. So uh, 10 seems to be the sweet spot for me might be different for you or I think in general use case I've tested on various setups uh, it, it's fine for me uh, and then we have a few more things that threshold range and center for, for the joystick control uh, and we'll go through that uh, the set DPI function very similar uh, very very simple uh, once you click the button 
it will uh, go to a particular case 0 1 2 or 3 and it will uh, you know set the LED brightness and then uh, it will set the sensitivity uh, uh, into the range and then the threshold and center is calculated on on, on the on that basis um, the default is only used when you are plugging in the board for the first time and for some reason the EEPROM is not cleared out uh, so when you plug it in uh, and it you, you it detects a mouse you you change the DPI and uh, it's, it's some random value that's not between 1 and Three, uh, between 0 and 3 uh, it will just default it to 0 and then it will work just fine so uh, and then basic setup you set up your different pins and your EEPROM and uh, stuff like that so um, run your set DPI initially as I said and uh, yeah uh, that's about it so uh, you read your X Y and Z uh, X and Y coordinates and you have different functions uh, when the when particular uh, buttons are pressed and how to react to them and um, I'll, I'll, which all the functionality I just showed and here you have uh, and you have the main function that does the uh, read access and stuff like that uh, to just convert it into uh, something that the mouse um, movement function uh, can actually work off of um, so I'm not going to explain all of this in um, you know, a lot of detail but what it's doing it's uh, it's taking the readout and then uh, placing it between a, a range of a threshold and making sure how, how far away it is from the center um, and, and stuff like that making sure it doesn't drift a lot now I tried using float to may have a bit more sensitivity maybe see if actually float values can go from the USB port to the system but it's actually not possible uh, the mouse uh, the mouse API or uh, the library only works um, uh, in integers so it might be a limitation of the the, the USB HID specification or the hardware itself that it doesn't uh, uh, allow very uh, no like like float values to go so I can like have 1.2 or 1.3 so sometimes the uh, the mouse acceleration is only based on the software uh, on your system so in this case KDE will handle the mouse acceleration as uh, I keep the mouse uh, pinned to the pin to each of the sides uh, and it will accelerate accordingly so yeah um, apart from that there's not much to it so very simple project just so I can use a mouse in a very very constrained pace space and I don't have to pay a lot of money to get fancy ball mouse and it also kind of looks cool on the table so uh, that's been about it thank you so much for watching and hopefully uh, you you kind of you know got something from it again all of this is on git labs I will uh, post the link down in the description and uh, you know have everyone has a good time and hopefully this kind of helps you in some way so thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next one